Hey everybody, it's Professor Williams, and today we're going to look at measures of central tendency, specifically the mean, median, and mode. So what I have here is I have my need for speed data. What it is, it's the average lap times for the last 10 Indianapolis 500s. And so here we'll see that it's sorted by year, but the actual speed data is the data that I'm interested in. So remember, when you get data, it's better to go ahead and sort it. And I'm going to sort it from smallest to largest. We don't care that these years are now out of order. What we care about is that these values here are now sorted from smallest to largest. So we're going to begin with the mean, and that's simply the arithmetic average of all data points. It's the same average you've been calculating since you were little. Um, however, we have a distinction that needs to be made. So when we have sample data, we are going to calculate the mean and then represent it by x bar. So we're going to sum, that's what this big sigma means, sum all values of x and divide it by n. And you'll notice that's a little n, right? And that's because small n always represents the number of observations in our sample. If we had population data, then the mean would be represented by the Greek letter mu. We would calculate it the same way. We would sum all x's, but we would divide it by a capital N, because capital N represents the number of observations in a population. So you can see that the calculation does not differ, however, the notation does. So I've calculated the mean. I added up my speeds, came up with 1,815. I had 10 observations, divided that out, and I came out to 181.50. A good rule of thumb is to carry this calculation out two decimal places beyond your raw data. You remember all of our speeds were in whole numbers, but now I'm going to carry this out and leave this 0.50. In other words, I'm not going to round it. And that provides for a much more um, accurate calculation when you use the mean inside of another formula. Next, we have the median. And the median is simply the middle value of the sorted data. In other words, it's the point at which the same number of observations are above and the same number of observations are below. So we have one of two situations when we look at the, at the median. The first is we have an odd number of observations. Our n is odd. And in that case, it's pretty easy. We just go in, we find the middle value, and that becomes the median. However, when we have the second situation, when n is even, we still need the center of the distribution. And the way to do that is to take the average of the two middle values. So in this case, I had 10. So I know that I'm going to have to do this average. So I have 10. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. There's the fifth observation. So I'm going to always use the fifth plus the sixth, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. And what you'll see is that when I split this, I have the same number above and below. And now what I know is my median falls in between these two. So I simply took the 185 plus the 186, divided it by 2. I came up with 185.5. Again, we're going to carry that out at least one decimal place for accuracy's sake. All right, and last but not least, we have the mode. And the mode is simply the value with the highest frequency. In other words, what value in our data set occurs more often than the others? And so there are four different situations we can have. We could have no mode. I always think that should be no modal, but it's no mode. In other words, every value is unique, and no value repeats itself. Our data set can be unimodal, meaning there is only one mode, which means there's one value that appears more often than all the others. We could have a bimodal data set, which would mean that there are two modes. And that means that you have two values that repeat the same number of times, 
and they are the two values that appear most often. And then we have everything else, which is multimodal, and that's when we have more than two values that repeat. In other words, we'd have 111222333456. That would make 1, 2, and 3 all modes, and so we would consider this to be multimodal. In reality, once you get to multimodal data, um, the mode is not a very meaningful uh, measure of center. It may instead be an indicator that you have patterned data. So in order to determine the mode for my speeds, I'm simply going to go through and I'm going to see how often everything repeats. And so these are all single. 186 appears two times, but 187 appears three times. And so since 187 appears three times, we have a unimodal data set, and the mode is 187. As always, I hope that you found this useful, and thanks so much for watching.